Hello and welcome back to Tim Rohde Drive Stuff. Now, if you think balding mid-30s blokes and lavender jumpers have an image problem, you should try being a van-based MPV. They're practical family cars, but SUVs have absolutely buried them in the past 10 years in terms of sales figures. But I still think there's some charm, especially if you're a family person like me. So I've booked in this new Citroen e for a week. I've been living with it. I'm Tim and I'm gonna review it. Let's go. Yep, this is the Citroen Bilingo, and say it quietly, but I think this might be the best car in the world. I say car, van thing. And when I say best, I mean best for me at my stage of life. I'm a dad of two young girls aged under three, and uh, sliding doors just make life easier, which is only part of the reason I think this is a brilliant thing. But anyway, this is an evolution of the Bilingo, which is obviously Citroen's van-based MPV. And there is a Bilingo panel van, which looks a bit different, but it's still pretty good. I've driven that recently. Uh, this is electric only now. Earlier in 2022, Citroen quietly, well not quietly, they did a press release about it, they axed the petrol and diesel version. So you can only get this in an EV form now, hence the green bit on the number plate if you're not British, that's what that means. So yeah, this has a 135 horsepower electric motor with a 45 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. So it's got a range of 174 miles on paper. In the real world, it's more like 150. So it's not got massive range. It can charge up to 100 kilowatts, which gets you to 80% or an 80% charge in half an hour. I feel like I say that half hour to 80% thing for every EV. But anyway, uh, there are two main downsides to this really. It's not that quick and it can't go that far on a charge, but nearly everything else about this is wonderful. So let's crack on. Let's talk about the look. Citroen does love a funky, slightly weird looking thing, don't they? They've got the split headlight, daytime running light things. They've got these color accents. Uh, they're, because this is a top spec XDR one, so they're orange. Um, these start at £31,000, which seems like quite a lot. This one is £36,000 with options. It's got £600 of paint, £200 of an alarm. Slightly weird, that isn't standard. Uh, it's got a park assist pack, which is 800 quid. It's got a sunroof with some built-in storage, which we'll get onto, and £250 of keyless entry. Around the side, you've got sliding doors, and a real bonus to those sliding doors is your kids can't mash them furiously into whatever's parked next to you. Uh, but they are quite hard to open and shut. Well, shut, I had to do them for my other half. You need to really yank them and they're not electrically operated in any way, shape or form. Um, down the side, you've got these air bumps, that Citroen's thing to help avoid car park dings. And it is worth noting, you can get this in two wheelbase lengths. You can get an M1 or an XL, which is 35 centimeters longer. This is the M1 and the XL also is a seven seater. So I think it's the cheapest electric seven seater this side of a Tesla Model X could be wrong in that now. I can't remember. There is another electric seven seater, but I've forgotten it. Anyway, around the back, it looks, well, looks vanish. It's not particularly sexy here. And that is part of the reason, I guess, that MPVs have died a bit of a death because SUVs do just look a bit better and have a bit more status. This gets a reversing camera because it's an XTR one. Entry level feel ones make do with regular parking sensors. Uh, the tailgate, we need to talk about the tailgate. It sounds boring, but it's huge. It's not that heavy to open. It's not automated though, it's not electric. But <laughs> yeah, you can't park too close to a wall with that in a car park or other cars. However, when it is open, it's like a massive rain shelter. So if there are cats and dogs falling all around you, I can stand under here, I'm six foot three, and I'm happy as Larry. Now the boot is obviously a big, big selling point of this car, which probably means I should expose it. The boot is a massively handy space. It's 775 litres. And if I flip those rear seats down, which I'll show you, it's three and a half thousand litres of space, which it is a van, it is a van. So it's massively practical. If you like mountain biking and you have a family and you don't need to combine both, get one of these. The XL models get 1,050 litres of boot space with all the seats up and 4,000 with them down. You've got this parcel shelf here. It's just a really handy space. I've been able to chuck prams in here basically not even folded up. <laughs> it's that big, it's ridiculous. You have got to carry your charging cables around there, but I mean, they don't take up much of the boot. And if you're gonna use the public charging network, you can obviously leave them at home. Parcel shelf, this is part of one of the packs. Can't remember which one, but this is a little drop down storage space. 
and you can actually access it from inside the car with these little sliding doors. How neat is that? So yeah, lots of storage, lovely big square space. Now the interior is equally cool and clever if you're into that sort of stuff, which I am at the moment. It's really easy to get child seats in here and the uh, accompanying children because it's just an easy step up to get in there. And look, you get three individual rear seats and you can fold them down individually as well. They kind of rotate forward a bit and go down. You just pull a little tab up here for the middle one and down it goes. So you can have a really nice flexible space. They have all got Isofix on, but he says, hang on. <laughs> But the Isofix is just hidden behind a little zip here. So you have to kind of uh, zip that up and then you can do that and get your Isofix in there. But having three Isofix points across the middle is very handy if you've got a big family and you've got three kids who are all in car seats. I'm gonna hop in. I'll show you headroom for an adult and it is ludicrous, frankly. Uh, I've got loads and loads of headroom. The camera's way too close to me, but there you go, hang on. Yeah, it's a van. It is really big. Uh, if I shut the door, he says, Shutting the door from inside does take a bit of muscle because they latch backwards and you just have to yank them forward. But once it is shut, I've got a well, massive view out. It's really nice. I've got electric rear windows, so you're not locked in here like in some van-based MPVs. And as part of, I think it's the family pack, you get blinds back here as well. It is a bit plasticky back here, but I don't really mind. Kids are going to destroy it anyway. Uh, picnic table's there. I should probably show you the roof storage. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but in the roof, it looks like there's a light up panel here, but this is actually like almost a tray that you could put stuff in and it goes the full length of the car. And up front, you've kind of got map pockets up here. You could just chuck stuff up there, waterproofs, coats, anything you need to stash. And Citroen says there are 26 cubbies in this car. And I think it's probably true. I mean, of course it's true. They'd get done for lying otherwise, but there's just loads of places for your stuff. You've got a flat floor, cubbies, cubbies, lots of cubbies there behind the infotainment screen. It is just such a well thought out thing for families. Anyway, let me show you the upfront bits properly because there's some tech up there as well, which is good. Now up front, there is quite a lot of tech because this is a top spec XTR one. You get a 10 inch digital driver's display, which shows your speed, your state of charge, um, and also some of the safety systems like lane keep assist and all that jazz. You can use uh, the buttons on the steering wheel to change what screen you're looking at. And you've got a little eight inch screen here. Well, it's not that little. It's colorful, it's fine. The built-in sat nav is all right, but it has got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Physical buttons for all your climate controls and that's your gear selector there, so forward, back, and you can press B on the right hand side there to increase the level of regen from the electric motors. Now I quite like the fact that there's a little bit of a, a little bit of green going on in here. I don't know if you can see that, but the plastics at the front of the dash are all kind of greeny and you've got this kind of fake leather strap across a glove box, which is quite deep and quite handy. And then you've got another one down there for the manual, excuse my bag. It's just, I don't know, it's just a really nicely thought out thing. My only real criticism is I don't think the rear view mirror is quite big enough. You can, it doesn't give you a full view out of the back, but it's near enough. And then you've got controls for the lights and everything up there. Anyway, that's a very quick tour of the inside of the Ebelingo. Let's take it for a drive and see if it's any good. I really do like this. But yeah, I'm also enjoying how good the lighting is in here off my bald head. Right, let's go for a drive in the Citroen e Berlingo. It's so voluminous in here, big. I've had to use a different second on the GoPro, but hopefully it works. Anyway, the first thing you notice when you sit in is that it has a high driving position. The second thing you notice is you've got an armrest. Anything that makes you feel like you're captain of a ship is a good thing. You have to hold the start button for about half a second. You can't just prod it. You have to hold it for half a second and then it will come to life. My little head up display thing has risen out the dashboard. That shows me the speed limit, my speed, and also the lane keeping assist functions. But otherwise you're into D and then off you go in electric silence. Now, this is a very easy car to drive at low speeds around town. Visibility out is really, really good all around. There's basically glass all the way around the whole thing. And as I said, you've got rear camera as well, which has got a really wild, really wild. It's got a really wild field of view, really wide field of view. I can't get my words out today. I think it's the jumper. Uh, I would say you do feel pitter patteringness because it's got a heavy battery along the floor of it. It means the center of gravity is low, but it does mean that over broken surfaces, it does feel a little bit more unsettled than a petrol version. Admittedly, the only petrol one of these I've driven 
was the commercial vehicle, which didn't have seats in the back, obviously, so it could feel different. But you don't really mind it, to be honest. And my kids have loved being driven in this. They're like, Daddy, can we go in the van? Because it's high up and they get a good view out and it just feels like something special. My three-year-old said, I like it because it has slidey doors, which is the same reason I like it. <laughs> uh, appeals to three-year-olds and 36-year-olds alike. As a man on a bicycle, I shan't kill him. Not today. But anyway, I'm going to get some dual carriageways, talk about refinement at motorway speeds, and then hit some twisty roads where the Ebelingo's grippy handling should really shine. Maybe. as a van. Right, I'm about to get onto a dual carriageway. So I'll be able to show you the performance of the Bilingo, e Bilingo, going from 30 to 70 miles an hour. 0 to 60 is 11.7 seconds. I'm in normal mode. Uh, it's 30 miles an hour. I'm going to put my foot flat to the floor. 40, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, it's not very fast, but it's fine. Now I'm up to speed. You have the main downside of driving something that's based on a van, and that is, it's reasonably noisy in here. There's quite a bit of wind noise off those big door mirrors, and it's handy having big door mirrors, frankly, so it's a trade-off. And it's just, it's not so much tire noise, as noise that kind of echoes around the space a bit. It's not as bad as the commercial version of this. There's obviously a bit more sound deadening in here. It's perfectly livable and it's not going to drive you potty or anything like that. Now, I've got 65% battery left and I've got 100 miles left. So that is about 150 miles of the real world range. You have got three driving modes, however. I'm in normal. There is eco, which adds about five miles to your range. And that kind of limits the air con and limits the power you get from the accelerator. The accelerator, you know what I mean. And uh, there's a power mode which takes five miles off, but gives you a sharper throttle response and just makes it feel a fair bit quicker. I've just been leaving it in normal mode and it's been absolutely fine. And as I said earlier, you can press this little B button down here to introduce a higher level of regenerative braking. I can never say that word. But yeah, as an actual 70 mile an hour motorway cruiser, it's pretty decent for what it is. It's probably not as hushed as an SUV, but it's more practical. But anyway, I'm heading some twisty roads now. I'll see you there. Right, I'm just about to get to my twisty road, so I'm gonna click up into power mode. It just gives you a bit more shove when you put your foot down. And although it's not necessarily all that fast, you do get that instant electric push, even if you're already doing 40 or 50 miles an hour, you put your foot down, and you do go quicker than you would in a petrol one, at least a petrol one with a small engine. Yeah, driving it on a twisty road is fine. You don't really have to think about what you're doing. You don't think, oh, I'm in a roly-poly van because the regular Bilingo van pretty much handles like a car. And this is much the same, doing the speed limits down here. I feel completely in control. I've got confidence the steering does what I want it to do. The only real niggle is the brakes. They are fine once you're up to speed, but around town, you do sense when it switches between using the electric motor to brake and using the physical brakes. There's a little step and a little lurch when you're slowing down at low speeds. It's not a problem here, but it's the first thing I noticed when I got into this at the start of the week. I nearly kind of, uh, not didn't go into the back of someone at a junction, but I stopped a bit sooner than I thought, and there was a lurch in between. But yeah, to drive, it's not like loads of fun or anything, but you can go down a twisty country road at 60 miles an hour, absolutely no problem. And it's reasonably brisk once you're moving, just not off the line. But anyway, to summarize how this drives, it is comfortable. It is very easy to drive. You can just drive it like a car. You don't have to think, oh, I'm in a big van thing. It is just get in, set your mirrors and go. It's as simple as that. Anyway, back to Tim for an outro from Tim. Tim, outro Tim, not me. Definitely not me, different jumper, same jumper. Right, in conclusion, what do I think of the Citroen e Bilingo? It is, well, it's a cracking family car. It is, I don't know, slightly annoying that you can only get it as an EV now because 150 miles of real world range isn't quite enough for me or the adventures that I would want to take this on with my girlfriend and my kids. So yeah, kind of still slightly wish you could get a petrol version, but obviously you can get one of those used, but really practical thing probably deeply uncool so i think if image matters to you you're not going to be looking at this in the first place you'll be getting 
an Audi or something boring like that. But for me, this has a charm and a joy about it that is matched by basically nothing else. It's got practicality above everything else. And as I said, I just wish it had a bit more driving range, but otherwise those are pretty much the only downsides. It's not a driver's machine, but so what? I can go and make sandcastles and throw muddy clothes in it and not really care, which is the important thing. But anyway, hopefully this little review has been helpful. If it has, please click like. Do subscribe to the channel because I've got plenty more practical family videos coming up soon. Car videos, not videos of families. That would be weird.